So today I'm going to explain to you about relays. So relays are commonly used in industrial systems for switching on and off devices. But why use relays or contactors? It is used to switch on high current loads. For example, we can have huge pumps, which results in high current devices. But a PLC output cannot drive the pump directly. We have to use signal relays to power contactors in direct online systems. And second reason is for isolation of circuits. We can use 24 volt DC on the coil, that is on the one side of the relay. And on the other side, we can use 230 volt or 440 volts the different relays that we use in industrial panels. Here we have different models. This is the com most common relay that you have. And nowadays we use slim relays. It is this one. It's very compact. Normally you have two types of relays. We have AC relays and DC relays. They don't work alone, so we have to use a base to accommodate the relay so that we can connect wires to the different terminals so this is a slim relay here is a relay which is here this relay we can remove and this one is a base so in this relay we have the a1 and a2 which is a dc supply that is this zero volt and this is a 24 volt dc and here you have the contact so this is a normally closed contact, the common, and here the normally open. These relays are no normally used as signal relays. I will tell them as signal relays. Why? Because they are not able to conduct a large amount of current. This relay is rated up to 6 amp, 240 volt. When we have PLC which don't have relays, then we use this type. But in most cases, I prefer to use this relay even if the PLC have relays. Why? Because let's say we have a problem on the motor. So the 230 volt will burn out the relay. Let's say we have a PLC which has an inbuilt relay. So let's say the motor has a problem. So the motor winding is short. So what will happen? We will have the maximum current which will go across the relay of the PLC so the PLC will be damaged. So just because of one relay, we will have to change the whole PLC because normally the inbuilt relay is inside the PLC. The advantage of using this type is that, let's say we have a problem with the motor, only have to change this relay. This relay is relatively cheap, so it's maybe about $6. And this whole relay module is about $10. Let's say we have to control a pump which uses power less than 6 amp. So we can use this type of relays. And also, when you see the size of it compared to this one, you can see the size difference. Especially when you are, you, you are building a small panel where space is limited so we prefer to use this one but when we are using we, we, we do have space and we have to use large amount of current so we prefer to use this one and also this one has only one pair of contact but this one has multiple contact so not this one This has multiple contact. One pair, second pair, third pair, fourth pair. So, so this is a common, normally closed, and this one is a normally open. It depends on the situation where your system is being used. If you don't need multiple contact, so we use this one. If we are not limited in terms of space and we need multiple contact, so we use this one. And for the connection, 
now I will try to explain the connection of these relays. So from the PLC, you will have to connect the ground, which will go to this terminal, and the 24 volt, which is coming from the PLC, this will go to this terminal, the A1 plus. And here, you will have the common, and depending on your situation, you can use a normally close or the normally open. This is for this type. Here are the terminals. Here, you can see the terminals clearly. For this relay, this type, so we will have power the A1 and the A2. So this is uh, two terminals for the coil. Really, this is a normally closed contact. This one is a common. As you can see, this one we can move it the common. This contact is a normally open. As you can see, it's open. This one is a coil, and this wire goes to the common terminal, which is here. This one is for the coil. So now I will energize the relay to show you how it works. As you can see, you can see here there's a gap. This is an electromagnet. The coil is here and the armature is in the middle. So right now it's in the off state. I will switch it on. The armature has attracted the armature has attracted the metal plate which is here and thereby closing the common terminal to the normally open terminal. Here you can see the LED light emitting diode and here you have the resistor to limit the current. I will just switch on for you to see the LED. So this relay is a DC relay. So you have, although it's a DC relay but this LED has Two LED inside. Why? Because you, the A1 normally we put the positive and A2 we put the negative. But even if you reverse the terminal, the LED will remain on because we have LED is in opposite direction. So right now lighting up, I will just reverse the terminal. You can see now the LED from this side is lighting up. So there's one LED on this side and one LED on the other side and also you can see the inrush current the inrush current and the reverse polarity so right now there is power and when I remove you will see that the other LED also lights up so this is because of the lens flow the polarity is reversed so that's why the other LED is lighting up inside is a coil here are the contacts the normally open, the common in the middle, and here you have the normally closed contact. And this relay, we have the advantage that we can bypass this, this relay. So when you open, I mean here, you can just open it, open it, and this will close the relay. And this will be in indicated by the orange tab, which is here. And also you have an indicator LED, which show you whenever the coil is active. So I have con already connected the relay, A1, A2, and on the bottom, you have the common contact for this relay. The contact varies according to the different manufacturer. For this one, the common is on pin 9, and the normally open is on pin 5, and normally close is on pin 1. So now I will switch on the relay. As you can see, it's powered on, and to this is connected a bulb of 12 volt, but it uses a large amount of current, normally 5 amps, but my power supply can give only 3 amps, so that's why it's dim. So now I will switch it off.
I switch it on. So now I will show you the current that is being used. So this is a free channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. On this channel, I'm giving the coil a 24 volt supply. As you can see, 24 volt. On this channel, I'm giving the load that is connected on the normal point. On this channel, I'm I have connected the load. The positive goes to the common and the signal goes out from the normally open of the relay. Just to see the consumption of the relay, it's 42 milliamps. As you know, a relay is used to power heavy load devices. So right now, I'm using 42 milliamps and now I'm going to apply the load. The load is using 3 amps, so I can switch on and off this load using this small signal that is 40, 41 milliamps as you can see now i will remove i will remove the signal so the signal is removed i can switch on the relay again this will power the coil and the coil will attract the armature to close so now i will give you an overview this removes the signal from the coil now I apply again to the coil. Switch off and switch on. We do the connection for a relay. Now I will show you how the coil reacts when we give power to the coil and we remove power. So this is a connection of the relay. So we will monitor the signal on the oscilloscope. So you can see right now the relay is on and it's off but when it's off you can see the voltage go also on the negative side we'll just make a no. so this is a waveform which is observed on the oscilloscope you can clearly see the negative voltage here is the same waveform but I have expanded it so that we can see the negative side. Now I will add a diode to see how the signal changes. As you can see now the negative voltage has gone because the diode is acting as a clipping diode. So if the diode was not present this would have damaged the circuit especially if it was driven by a transistor normally we have variable speed drive which has transistors output and sometimes we have plc output modules which are based on transistor so be sure to have diodes on the relays so thank you so do subscribe to the channel